Hi, I'm Chin Liu. And I'm Sal. And this is our next make. This week we've been working behind the scenes to help our friends prepare for the eighth edition of an amazing event called SlugMe. SlugMe stands for the SolidWorks largest user group meeting ever. And it's a global event that brings together the amazing SolidWorks user community to share knowledge and have a bunch of fun. This year, SlugMe is focusing on the maker in all of us. And we've joined the team to help build whatever the design team dreams up. Part of the design requires a pedestal. So we went to our local hardware store to get inspiration from the millwork aisle. We love browsing through the various molding profiles and imagining how different shapes will work with one another. Back in the shop, we start by cutting a few one by six pieces of poplar down to rough length. We've designed the pedestal to have a central sleeve that will slide over this four by four post. I've set up the table saw to bevel the edges on all four boards that make up the sleeve. With the blade tipped to 45 degrees, I rip one edge on all four of the boards. Then I reposition the feather board before beveling the other edge. Keeping the boards pressed firmly against the fence and down onto the table are key to getting nice, uniform bevels that will make your glue up go well. The sleeve gets glued up just as if it were a small box. I find that a few strategically placed pieces of tape stretched across the joint are enough to keep it tight during the glue up. And a long strip of tape along the length of the joint prevents glue squeeze out on the outside. I let the glue set up for a few hours before taking off the tape. I'm really happy with the results. I built this simple frame with mitered corners and it's held together with pocket screws. This is going to act as the uppermost layer to our pedestal. Building the frame was really easy. With the miter saw dialed in to cut perfect 45s, I cut four identical pieces of poplar and then drilled pocket holes in both ends of two of the pieces. A bit of glue and screws finishes the job. To connect the frame to the sleeve, we're going to use several pieces of molding. We're going to start with this very large piece of molding. It'll take up most of the distance between the two faces, and then we'll turn to this smaller piece to finish the gap. When you're working with crown molding, it's important to remember that you have to cut it upside down. You have to imagine the bed of your saw as the ceiling and the fence as the wall. The other thing to keep in mind is that it's really easy to get slightly different angles each time you cut this, and that's because the bearing surfaces on the back are really rather small. So what I like to do is place the molding up against the fence, and once I have it in place, bring in a stop block that I can clamp in place and get repeatable cuts every time. Take your time when cutting large pieces like this, and let the saw come to a full stop before raising it. If you raise the blade while it's still spinning, you run the risk of the teeth catching on the molding and ruining the super crisp edge that you just created. And after all, creating great miters is all about maintaining these crisp edges. While we were working, we decided that an extra layer of trim would make the pedestal look even better. So we built out the perimeter of the frame with the small molding. We just glued and pin nailed the pieces in place. To properly support the crown molding, we've made this 2x4 blocking. We arrange it in a spiral around the pedestal sleeve and then glue and screw it in place. The crown molding will lean against the bevels on the blocking, giving it much needed support as well as a place for glue and pin nails. Being extremely fussy at this stage of the glue up is really important and can make all the difference in whether you get good results. We would apply glue and then use tape, clamps, and extra hands to make sure the miters were perfect before we nailed the pieces in place. The rest of the trim went on in the same fashion. We'd sneak up on cutting the perfect length for each mitered piece and then glue and pin it in place. For a bit more visual interest, we added a strip of half round a few inches below the crown. A piece of scrap wood acted as a perfect spacer. Now that the top of the pedestal is done, I want to create a similar effect down here at the bottom, but I couldn't find a piece of crown molding small enough. So I'm going to take this piece of chair molding and bevel both edges, effectively turning it into a piece of crown molding. This is done really easily over at the table saw. This piece is going to sit right here at the bottom, but to give it a little bit more interest and support, I'm going to bring another piece of wood right underneath it so that it raises it up like this. And then to make this a little more interesting, I'm going to use a router to create a detail. We built out the bottom in the exact same way as the top, starting with a mitered and pocket screwed frame and then gluing and pinning on the crown molding. I think it came out great and can't wait to see how it looks when it's painted and part of the bigger Slug Me build. We hope this build gave you the confidence to tackle your next molding project. And we hope it inspired you to see that you can combine off the shelf pieces to build up a unique shape. Can you guess what's going to sit atop this pedestal? And can you guess what we'll be doing with these pieces? They're part of the bigger project and were cut using our CNC. Be sure to check out the links in the description to learn more about the SlugMe event. 
And definitely mark your calendars for the live event at 1 p.m. Eastern on Thursday, October 26th, where you'll see the SlugMe team design and build something amazing. Until then, we'll see you on our next make.